Queen Raja Zarif Safia is the first and only wife of Malaysia's new King Ibrahim. They have been together for more than 40 years and have faced many challenges in their life's journey. Her subjects consider her a perfect queen who has dedicated her life to the people and her family. But why were their parents against their marriage? How did she manage to remain the king's only wife when he could have more than one? And what other exhausting events occurred during that hard year when she learned of her son's terrible diagnosis? Watch the video to the end to find out. Let's get started. Raja Zarif Sophia is of high birth, so she has always been able to count on a carefree life. She was born in 1959 into the royal family of the Sultan of Perak, which is part of Malaysia. Her father, Idris Shah II, was a wealthy landowner known for his amorous ways. He had eight wives who bore him 14 children. Safia was the third child. Her father loved her dearly and did everything for her happiness. The princess received an excellent education. After completing primary school in the capital of the Sultanate of Perak, she was sent to England to study. She received her secondary education at Cheltenham College for Women. Later, the girl entered Oxford University, where she received a Master of Arts degree in Chinese studies. She is considered to be the most educated queen in all the states of Malaysia. In England, Zarif Safia realized that women were capable of pursuing the sciences, the arts, and even government on an equal footing with men. This profoundly changed her worldview. Prince Ibrahim of the Kingdom of Johor met such a free and educated, yet noble and conservative girl at one of the social gatherings. Ibrahim was the crown prince at the time and had received military training in his homeland and then in the United States. He was only a year older than Zareth Sophia, so they quickly found a common language. After a short time, the young people realized that they were made for each other. They asked their parents for their blessing to marry and they were denied. Nowadays, many people disagree with this development and believe that it was an ordinary dynastic marriage. However, a number of researchers on the life of the Johor royal dynasty claim that their parents were initially against the marriage. This is because the Johor royal family had some stains on its reputation at that time. Ibrahim and his father, Sultan Iskandar, were accused of some pretty serious crimes. Sultan Iskandar was charged with manslaughter for shooting a man outside his private helicopter after mistaking him for a smuggler. And his eldest son, Ibrahim, was convicted of shooting a man in a nightclub during a brawl. They took advantage of royal immunity and were pardoned. The chief judge in these cases was Zareth Safia's uncle, Raja Aslan Shah, who later succeeded her father on the Pirak throne. Of course, these unpleasant events may have affected the relationship between the two ruling families. The love story of Ibrahim and Zareth Safia was like that of Romeo and Juliet. However, the couple proved that their union would only benefit the kingdoms of Perak and Johor. After much negotiation, they received the blessings of the ruling families to marry in 1982. The wedding was held in both kingdoms and no expense was spared. The older generation of Malaysians still remembers these luxurious celebrations. Parades of festively decorated cars moved through the streets of Kuala Kangsar, the capital of the Sultanate of Perak. Sweets were distributed to everyone and a record-sized cake was ordered for members of the royal family. It was so large that it was transported on the roof of a car. The celebration attracted guests from all over Southeast Asia and royalty. A series of stamps and even decorative plates featuring the newlyweds were issued to commemorate the wedding. Modern collectors are willing to pay a lot of money for these relics, but they are rarely sold. After her marriage, Zareth Safia continued her studies in Oxford, Incredible events awaited her, which made her stronger and aroused the love and respect of the nation. The royal couple had six children, five sons and a beautiful daughter. All of them received first-class education and made brilliant careers in management, business or sports. The queen enjoys attending the races of her younger sons, Abdul Rahman and Abu Bakr. The boys became famous car racers and won several international competitions, representing their home state of Johor. Unfortunately, Zuris Safia's life was not without tragedy. The biggest one involved a fourth child named Abdul Jalil. A brilliant yachtsman and special forces soldier, he was diagnosed with liver cancer at the age of 24. 
Rajazarath Safia had been a frequent visitor to hospice patients, elderly women and children with cancer since the 1990s, but that didn't prepare her for the news of her son's devastating diagnosis. No one had any idea he had cancer, the queen recalls. He just started having pain in his right shoulder and everyone thought he had pulled a muscle. When the pain became unbearable, the prince went to the doctors and this terrible disease was discovered. The queen was with her son through all of his chemotherapy sessions, supporting him and hiding her tears and pain from him. The woman who spoke words of comfort to mothers in the oncology ward now needed words of encouragement herself. Jaleel's illness was not the only thing on Raja Zarif Safia's mind. There were so many events that year that took all of her energy. The wedding of her eldest son Ismail, the move to a new palace and the coronation that made her queen of Johor. She also had other public duties, as a sultan's wife should. In between all these important events, Abdul Jalil underwent a liver transplant in the best Chinese clinic. His parents did everything they could to save him. But no amount of money could restore their son's health. In 2015, the prince passed away, leaving a deep wound in his mother's heart. The queen wrote a touching letter to her son on Facebook. Here are a few lines from it. I have a thousand and one memories of you during your last days in this world. I remember one day you closed your eyes and tears ran down your cheeks as you struggled with pain. And I held your left hand and cried, trying not to make a sound. I thought you couldn't see me crying because your eyes were closed. But you knew and you put your right hand on mine and patted it as if to say, don't cry, mom, I'm all right. However, instead of falling into deep mourning and depression, the royal family decided to honor the memory of their son by helping people suffering from cancer. An ultra-modern cancer center was built in the capital of the Sultanate, the city of Johor Bahru, and its foundation is chaired by Raja Zarith Sophia. Every year, 7,000 Malaysians are treated there. This action shows the active and optimistic character of Zarith Sophia and her husband, Sultan Ibrahim. In January 2024, Zarith Safia became queen of all of Malaysia, including the state of Johor. Her husband Sultan Ibrahim was elected first among equals by the Council of Monarchs of Malaysia to lead the state. The coronation took place on January 31, 2024. For Zarith Safia, it was both a happy and a sad day. It was exactly 40 years ago that her father, Sultan Idris Shah II, died. And now, four decades later, his daughter has become the queen of all Malaysia. Zariz Sophia has always actively assisted her husband in the administration of the Sultanate of Johor. She is involved in scientific and social activities as well as fine arts. She inherited her love for art from her father. Her paintings have been exhibited in many prestigious exhibitions. With a perfect command of five languages, the queen wrote several scientific works on linguistics and four children's books, Zarit Safia earned special love from her subjects through her charity work. She helped tens of thousands of her countrymen affected by the terrible floods. For these and other good deeds, her subjects began to call her the Queen of Hearts. By her own admission, this means more to her than all her official titles combined. The Queen inherited her passion for philanthropy from her parents. In an interview she said, I watched my parents prepare for events at orphanages and hospitals, I saw them interacting with people and helping them, and I wanted to continue doing that. And yet, the main mission of her life is to serve her family and help her husband. Queen Safiya and King Ibrahim carried their love carefully through life. The queen selflessly helped her husband in all his affairs and he, in turn, loved only her. This is evidenced by the simple fact that Ibrahim never thought of taking a second wife, even though Islamic customs allow it. Let's wish this wonderful couple more success and endless love. Subscribe to our channel and give us a like if you enjoyed the video. See you soon.